Hi, my name is Caroline, and in this lesson, we are going to learn about an English colony located in what is now present-day United States. Let's go explore Jamestown. While Roanoke and other early colonies were temporary settlements, Jamestown became the first permanent English settlement in North America. In 1607, 104 English men and boys arrived in present-day Virginia to start a settlement. Most of those in the settlement were from wealthy, upper-class families in England and came to the New World seeking treasure. They chose this specific area to form the settlement for two main reasons. First, it was a peninsula a landform surrounded by water on most of its border, while being connected to a mainland from which it extends. Due to the geography of the settlement, the colonists determined it would be easier to defend themselves from an attack. Secondly, the water surrounding the area was also deep enough for the English to tie their boats at the shoreline. We all love a good parking spot. The men and boys named their first new home Jamestown, after their king, King James I. The settlers quickly discovered their new home was infested with a rather pesky insect, the mosquito. Have you ever been on a camping trip or out playing somewhere on a summer night and found yourself getting eaten alive by a swarm of blood-sucking mosquitoes? The settlers were faced with this uncomfortable reality day in and day out. Many caught malaria a disease transmitted by mosquitoes that causes serious fevers and chills. Half of the settlers who arrived in this new land died within the first year. Let's pivot to the indigenous people of the area. The region of Virginia along the York and James Rivers in 1607 was home to an estimated 15,000 indigenous people at this time. The tribe, referred to as the Powhatans, was led by a man called Chief Wahunsnikov, The Powhatan people had inhabited this area of present-day Virginia for thousands of years. Tribes lived in villages of up to 100 longhouses along rivers and tributaries, where they hunted, fished, grew crops, and collected fruits and nuts as food and medicine. They traveled for trade along the waterways in canoes dug out from huge tree trunks. When the English settlers arrived, Chief Wahunsnikov wanted to trade with them. The Powhatans traded food with the settlers in exchange for weapons, tools, and copper. They also taught the settlers about hunting and farming in their region, which greatly assisted the English during their first winter. There are some characters during this time period that you may have heard of. Captain John Smith and Pocahontas. Spoiler alert, the Disney movie is not historically accurate. But John Smith and Pocahontas were real people. While the new colony struggled with food shortages and disease, Captain John Smith began guiding trips to Native American villages to find food. In December of 1607, a Powhatan hunting party captured Smith during one of these trips and brought him before Chief Wahunsnikov. According to Smith, the chief's young daughter, Pocahontas, saved him from being killed, although historians have questioned his account. In any case, the Powhatan released Smith and escorted him back to Jamestown. Captain John Smith became a leader when he decided and declared, He who will not work shall not eat. The colonists continued to raid Powhatan villages for food. Hungry and angry, Powhatan warriors attacked the fort at Jamestown. In October 1609, Smith was forced to return to England after sustaining a serious injury in a gunpowder explosion. Trade relations with the Powhatans were further strained because of a severe seven-year drought that had stressed food supplies for everyone in the region. The winter of 1609 to 1610 in Jamestown is now referred to by historians as the Starving Time, as the settlers ran out of food to eat. Of the 500 Jamestown settlers at the beginning of the winter, only 61 survived until the spring of 1610. After the difficult winter, additional supplies and settlers were sent to Jamestown to grow the colony. In the spring of 1610, An English colonist by the name of John Rolfe arrived to the colony with a tiny seed that would change everything for the colony, that of the tobacco plant. Historians believe Rolfe had obtained the tobacco seeds while trading goods somewhere in the Caribbean. Eventually, the Jamestown colonists learned to grow tobacco, which helped them gain wealth. 
By the 1680s, Jamestown was producing more than 30 million pounds of tobacco per year. The large tobacco plantations required hard labor. Twelve years after the colony was established in 1619, enslaved people from Africa were brought to America. The 20 enslaved Africans had been kidnapped from present-day Angola by the Portuguese and were brought to present-day Virginia to be purchased by English colonists. The arrival of enslaved Africans in the New World marks the beginning of over 250 years of slavery in North America. In addition to enslaved Africans, many English settlers were brought to Jamestown as indentured servants. In exchange for the passage, room, board, and the promise of land or money, these immigrants would agree to work for three to seven years. By the late 1600s, 75% of the colony was servants, with a few wealthy European settlers at the top of the hierarchy. After many previous attempts by the English to settle in the New World, Jamestown was the first permanent English settlement in North America. In a previous lesson, we learned about the lost colony at Roanoke. You may recall that, like Jamestown, settlers in Roanoke struggled with hunger. Ultimately, settlers of Roanoke disappeared and the site of the colony was left abandoned. Let's stop and think. Why do you think Jamestown was successful as a colony, while previous colonies like Roanoke were not? What allowed the colonists of Jamestown to thrive? If you are taking notes, you can pause the video here and write down your answers. The introduction of tobacco seeds to the Jamestown colony allowed the colonists to produce what we refer to as a cash crop. A cash crop is a crop that is sold for money. When colonists at Jamestown began selling tobacco, there was a very large demand for the crop by people back in Europe. By selling tobacco, the colony was able to produce huge amounts of wealth, which sustained the colony for many years to come. Although the production of tobacco came at the expense of the countless lives of enslaved people and indentured servants, it ultimately led to the success of the English settlement. It's time to practice what you learned about the Jamestown colony. And remember, stay curious and keep exploring. You never know what you may discover. <laughs>